So for the Creighton Blue Jays, joining Coach Greg McDermott will be Ryan Kochbrenner, Baylor Shireman, and Trey Alexander. We'll go ahead and get started. Coach, opening remark on today's game. <coughs> It was, uh, it's a really good win because uh, I, I, the more I watched NC State, the more they scared me. Um, you know, we're our defense is built on kind of being able to protect the rim, and they don't go to the rim necessarily that much. And uh, you know, Smith and Joyner are, are a handful to guard. And you know, fortunately, you know, we made them take some tough shots. They made some tough shots. Um, but I thought, uh, you know, our, our offense, especially the last 10 minutes, uh, when they got in foul trouble to be able to get it into Kalk, I thought everybody did a great job of finding him in the right spots. And then uh, we had made a three forever, and, you know, Baylor stepped up and made a couple big ones. And, you know, uh, you know Trey fought his tail off all day trying to chase Smith around and make everything as difficult <coughs> as possible. So, yes, he had 32 shots, but at least it took 27, 32 points, but it took 27 shots to get there. Question down here in the front row. Uh, Mac, obviously coming into the game, it felt like Burns hadn't seen anybody quite like Kalkbrenner, you know, a guy who can score without necessarily needing the ball. But does 31 points from, from Kalk surprise you at all? Uh, nothing surprises me from Kalk. Uh, you know, he's just continued to get better and better and better. And, you know, we were joking going into the locker room. I said, I can't believe he missed a free throw. Uh, you know, he shot 47, 48% as a freshman. Two years later, he's on the line, on the, on the, on the line with the game on the line late in the game and he's knocking down free throws. So he's just, he's improved in every facet of the game and uh, he was able to, to score on, on Burns, but then when they had to go small, you know, we did some good, a good job of executing some, some offense to get him <coughs> the ball around the rim and then he did the rest. Take a question here on the left side on the aisle, about four rows back. Okay. Uh, Baylor, Eddie Pels from AP. Um, Two parts. It was a little frustrating, I think, or did you get a little bit frustrated today early? And also, we saw you blow a kiss to the crowd at the end there after you made a big shot. Was that to anybody in particular or just showing the love? Yeah, you know, obviously when shots aren't going, um, you know, that can be frustrating, but you got to find different ways to impact the game. Um, and, you know, ultimately my teammates and my coaches have confidence that, you know, shots are um, going to fall eventually. And then that kiss, I, I don't know. I just, you know, Jason Tatum does it. I just did just that in the moment thing. It wasn't necessarily anything to anybody. So. Uh, next question will be on the right side towards the back. Ryan, Max Fritch with the Craytonian. Uh, when two of their bigger guys picked up four fouls, how did that change the game for you in particular? Uh, i say I still probably attack it the same way. Um, I mean, obviously, DJ Burns is much different than their other big guys, but I don't know, just have the same mindset, uh, trying to get deep catches, trying to just finish around the rim. I don't, I don't try to make it too complicated on myself by changing things up when different players come in, but I think just staying solid and just doing what I do. All right, we'll go to the left side on the, uh, about four rows back. Adam Kruger, CBS Omaha coach. When NC State went on its run to go up 37-30 briefly, you didn't call timeout. What does that say about the faith you have in your team? <laughs> well, they know I have faith in them. And, you know, R2 was kind of on the attack. And I'm not saying I wasn't 100% going to call a timeout, but he, he, he got his shoulders by him, so I let him go. Um, and, you know, I trust these guys. We, we work on all that stuff in practice. And basketball is a game of runs. There's ebbs, there's flows. and. And I think good teams have to figure out a way to play through some of that. And, uh, you know, we obviously took one when we w went from up nine to up three there at about 30 seconds later in the half. But, um, yeah, I, I trust these guys. They know I trust them. Um, you know, they, we play basketball a certain way. And, and when we play that way, we're pretty good. Um, and, you know, they know, it, they know it will be successful if we stick to our plan. And uh, today, especially defensively, I thought, uh, you know, a lot of what Smith got was difficult, but everybody else we did a terrific job on and took a, you know, very explosive offensive team and, um, you know, ran them off the three-point line. We're going the right side on the aisle, four rows back. Uh, Mark Kissel with Denver Post. Uh, first to Baylor, and then I'd also like to give both your teammates. Uh, not to obsess about the kiss, but were you, how much were you feeding off the crowd there down the stretch? And I know this isn't Omaha, but talk about the atmosphere and, and 
how it helped you guys. Yeah, I mean, it's March Madness, you know, it's a, a great crowd and atmosphere and, you know, growing up, that's what you dream of playing in. And, um, you know, like I said, it was just like in the moment thing, you know, I like to have a lot of fun and interact with the people in there. I think, you know, that's what it, what it's all about. And so um, that, that's kind of the, the gist of it. Go ahead, Trey, add to that. Uh, I just feel like uh, for us to come from Omaha and be able to play somewhere in like Denver where it's not too far for, from home, and for everybody to just come out the way that they did, I mean, I think it just shows how special the community is in Omaha. Uh, I feel like we're very, uh, it gives a very type of home feeling, and I feel like everybody just supports us, whether whether it's going good or bad. So for them to come out uh, to Denver and just see how much support we had from the Creighton community in Omaha and just kind of over in the area, it just means a lot. Ryan, did it feel like a home game to you? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, when we did starting lineups, every time they did one of our players, it felt like there was a roar from the crowd, and it was like, oh, this feels like home because the Creighton fans are amazing. They travel well, and everywhere you go, it's like it feels like home because you've got a ton of support in the stands just supporting you. Front row. <coughs> All right, Trey, obviously, Tequavion is a talented player. You talked about him earlier in the week. Um, and in that second half, it felt like a lot of those rear view contests, he's kind of doing away with them. Just talk to me about what was going through your head when you got a piece of that, that shot at the end there. Uh, I just know that we were kind of, the second half, we kind of tried to throw a couple different ball screen coverages at him. And uh, I mean, the big boy, he set some, some big screens. I mean, it's hard to get over, <laughs> over his screen. But uh, one time he just, I kind of got over it and I was able just to kind of get on the side of him. And then I seen that Calk was kind of getting back to his man. So I was just able to like barely get my fingertips on it. And I mean, obviously it was a big play in the game and it kind of changed the momentum of the way that we were able to play going down another end, so. And, and Mac, obviously you don't want Turk to score 30 something, but at a certain point, are you kind of living with him, maybe getting in the mid range and just locking up everybody else? Yeah, I mean, what do you do? Um, you know, we, he was effective against our drop coverage now. You say effective, he's, he shot less than 50% from the floor. So um, he, he got us on the drop coverage, and then we, we tried to stretch him out, and we, we, he got a couple fouls. Uh, but he, he's really good. And, and uh, you know, Trey, I think, I think I thought Trey did a great job of really chasing him and making it difficult. He had one three-point shot. I don't think Trey was on him on a, on a staggered out of a timeout. Um, but, you know, he's, he makes a lot of threes. so. Um, you know, we, we tried to make him do things that he doesn't normally do, and to his credit, he was able to make us pay part of the time anyway. We'll go to the right side, third row on the end. Vinny Benedetto with the Denver Gazette. Baylor, you hit your first three like 10 seconds into the game, and then it seemed like there was a little bit of a cold stretch. What, what was going through your mind when shots weren't falling, and, and especially when NC State, I think, got up six or seven early in the second half there? Yeah, well, I kind of touched on it earlier. It's just you got to be able to impact the uh, game in different ways. And so, you know, shots not falling. Um, try to do my best to, you know, rebound or try to create for other people or just as simple as just encouraging my other teammates because, you know, I know they have belief in me. And so, you know, when things aren't going well for me, maybe they're going well for Kalk, like he had a great game. So just in continuing to encourage them. So <coughs> we'll go on the left side on the aisle, four rows back. Uh, that will apply. Uh, Coach. How does the energy or the pace of this game set the foundation for the rest of the tournament? <clears throat> Excuse me. Well, we you know we saw a little bit of everything today. We had a lead. We lost a lead. We got the lead back, and, um, and you know then they closed in, and then we had to execute some things to finish. And you know I'd, it'll make a pretty good St. Pat's Day for our Irish fans that have followed us over here from Omaha. So I think they're going to have a little fun tomorrow. May be a little slow for them, uh, but. We, we've got a, a lot of work to do to get ready for Baylor. Uh, but, you know, in, in this tournament, you, 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 you put your, the entirety of your focus into game one. And, you know, you just have to survive in advance. They talk about it all the time. And um, we beat a good team today, and we're going to play another good team on Sunday. So uh, we'll get off our feet, we'll get some rest, get a good meal, and uh, we'll dig into Baylor. <coughs> We're on the right side in the front row. Ryan, Sean Keeler of the Denver Post. What, what does this mean to you playing in the second round in the context of this last year and obviously what happened? And I know you've probably talked about it with local guys, but it's got to be pretty special getting ready for this weekend. I mean, yeah. Uh, I heard at the end of the game last year, and so it's just going to be a lot of fun to play in the second round. It's just it's 32 teams left, so it's a big opportunity and big honor to be in that game. and. Just, Happy to be able to play in it this time. 
We'll go in the back on the aisle here on the left side. Coach uh, Pat Graham from the Associated Press. I got to ask you the backstory on your shoes. Uh, did your coaching staff convince you to do that, or how did that come about? Uh, my assistant ops guy, Matt, uh, John McHugh, ordered them five months ago, uh, and uh, thinking that we had a 50 50 chance we made the NCAA tournament to play on St. Pat's Day. So, uh, out of respect for him, and obviously <coughs> McDermott's a pretty Irish name, uh, we went with the green today. On the right side, second row. Matt, given given that you have all these guys who have experience in the NCAA tournament, did did you feel a looseness at all from them today? Just sort of let it all go, or what? <laughs> they were incredibly loose in the locker room before the game, almost uh, way way looser than I was. Um, but they've kind of been that way all year. Uh, you know, they, they prepare and they're serious in their preparation, and they take they take that to heart. Um, but they have a way of getting themselves ready that's a little different than the way I got myself ready back in the day. Uh, but it's also part of their personality. And you know, my job as a coach is you never want to take that away. That's part of the joy of playing the game is having fun with your teammates. And uh, if, if I ever start to take that away, then I need to do something else. Front row here on the left. Uh, Mac, it, it felt like early on you kind of let Art create a little bit and, and rock out there and try to play making. And obviously <coughs> the, the shot making, didn't work so much down the stretch for him, but uh, he kind of came alive uh, doing some of that intangible stuff we talked about um, late game, and you kind of pulled him aside after that run and, and, and talked to him. Kind of what were, you, what were you saying to him there? Well, on that particular play, I wanted to know why his guy was open in the corner before he stepped out of bounds. Uh, but uh, Art impacted, you know, Baylor talked about impacting the game in, in other ways besides scoring. Uh, Art had his fingerprints all over this game. Nine rebounds, he had four assists, and they were all for easy baskets. Uh, I thought defensively he did a good job, uh, made a couple great plays. Um, and to your point, got into the paint, off the dribble, but under control, and then made, made really good plays out of it. So, uh, you know, he only took six shots, only made two of them, made all of his free throws, almost had a double a double. Like I said, that's a, that's a heck of a tournament game. Yeah. And Ryan, obviously, um, some good guards in this tournament. Uh, <coughs> Baylor has a few. And obviously, Toquavion is pretty talented between the wall ups and you know all the stops down the stretch. How confident does that make you about um, defending some of the better guards in this tournament? Um, I think just as a team, we do a good job of defending anyone we game plan against. I think Trey, Baylor, Nemhar, all those guys do a great job of doing their part in our defensive scheme to make it tough on the other guards. And you know, sometimes some guy will make you pay from time to time, but we made it. Tough for Traquavion Smith tonight, and you can live with that. But uh, I believe in our guys to guard any other guards this tournament has, and I know we'll be ready for them. We'll go on the right side on the aisle, five rows back. Hey, Coach, uh, Adesina Quig, a lot of sports talk. Congratulations uh, on the win. Uh, Baylor's three was uh, late in the game, was set up by Ryan's pass uh, late in the shot clock. Were you hoping to use Ryan as a decoy there and get it to Baylor <coughs> and play? And, and also uh, Ryan's um, improvement uh, as a passer as well. Yeah, you know, it's just that that's one of our out of bounds plays that we practice quite often, but we haven't used it all year. And uh, it felt like an appropriate time. And, and uh, you know, like I said in the locker room to the guys, a, a play like that takes five guys. Uh, R2 set a good screen to free Ryan. Uh, Trey made a great pass to Ryan right where it needed to be. Uh, Art set a great screen uh, for Baylor up top, and then Baylor's got to finish it by making the shot. So. Uh, you know, as a coach, you save a couple of those in case you need them, and, and you hope when you need them that we execute it. And to, to our guys' credit, it was executed to perfection. Our last question will come on the right side in the back. Mac, do you have an update on Mason and his injury? Yeah, uh, I think the, the MRI or the x-ray, whatever they did, was negative in terms of anything worse than a sprain. But the, the, the grade of the sprain, I don't think we'll know <coughs> until he wakes up tomorrow and gets a little treatment tonight. Right. Thank you. That'll do it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you.